Hello there. In this video, we're going to discuss another sequence of numbers known as the la numbers. So the la numbers, right? So let me briefly describe the scenario for which the la numbers are sort of going to arise and the problem they're associated with. So we're going to consider a set of distinct objects, and I'm going to label those objects uh, 1, 2, 3, uh, and let's assume that the set is finite and goes up to n. So the question that the law numbers will answer is the following. So question. How many partitions of s uh, exists such that uh, the partition contains k non-empty subsets of S with some linear ordering, right? So I'm going to go through this definition of this question uh, in very detail so you can sort of understand what we're actually counting here. And also we're going to go through a few examples and a couple properties of these law number sequences. All right, so let's begin by reviewing what it means to be a partition of a particular set. So let's assume we have a set S which contains the elements A, B, C, and D. And let us consider the set be broken up into the following pieces. So I'm going to rewrite S instead as A union with B, C union with D. So I can define these sets say to be a1, a2, and a3, right? So clearly by definition um, the union of all of these sets is equal to s and the intersection, so the intersection between aj and ak where j does not equal k uh, is equal to the empty set. So if both of these properties satisfy then we say that the set containing this partitions, or is a partition, is a partition of the set S, right? So the union of all the sets have to be equal to the original, and they have to be pairwisely disjoint. All right, so let us go into our discussion of law numbers, and let's consider the case uh, where we have numbers or objects 1, 2, and 3. They can be A, B, and C. Um, there's no specific uh, numerical values associated to these objects 1, 2, 3, at least here. So in terms of pairings and notations, uh, when you see me write uh, 1, 2, uh, this implies our particular set um, or a particular subset of S, namely the set uh, A containing the numbers 1, 2, uh, such that 1 is less than or equal to 2, where this is just some linear ordering on the set for which I'm working with. Therefore, if you see uh, the pairing 2, 1, uh, then this, of course, is the same exact set, 1, 2, um, but it's with a different ordering on that particular set. So here we're defining uh, 2 to be less than or equal to 1, which is why I say don't uh, think of these as numerical values, but more so objects. All right, so let us look at the case where we want um, there to be only k is equal to 1 number of subsets in our partition. All right, so some partitions so the sum, uh, I'm going to let P be equal to the set of all partitions of the set that satisfy this particular structure. So clearly 1, 2, 3 is a partition. Um, clearly there's only one set here, uh, which is what we're sort of looking at. Uh, and the ordering here is 1, less than 2, less than 3. Right? We can also have 1, 3, 2. That is a, it's the same set, but it's a different linear ordering that we're defining. You could have 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3. You could also have 3, 1, 2, and 3, 2, 1. So this is all the possible sub, uh, subsets of S, such that they are partitions of S, 
and there is a unique linear ordering defined on them. So in this case, the number of elements in the set S is equal to 3. The number of sets in the partition for which we're interested is equal to 1. Therefore, we're going to denote this number, so the number of P is equal to 6 in this case. So we're going to define L and K, right? So this is going to be the NK law number. So in this case, L31 is going to be equal to 6. So now let's look at the case where k is equal to 2. So again, this is the number of subsets in our partition, or the number of sets in our partition. All right. So let's look at p again. So let's partition it into two sets. So we can do a double set and a singleton set in order to achieve that. So we can say have 1, 2, and 3. Right. Singleton um, linear orderings are very unique because there's only one element to order, namely 3. Um, also, uh, 213 uh, is a different, it's the same partition, but it's a different linear ordering, especially on that double uh, set. Uh, you, would, you could also have the partition uh, 312 uh, and also 132, right? Now, remember that um, 231, these are the same exact thing, right? It's the same linear ordering, it's the same set of sets. Right, so you don't want to count them twice. Um, also, uh, we have uh, what am I missing? Uh, two three, so we have two three one and three two one. So again, uh, the number of uh, distinct partitions in this case is six. Uh, therefore, the three second law number is going to be equal to six as well. All right, so let's look at k is equal to three. Right? So we have three elements and we want to break that up into three subsets right? Uh, that are not empty. So that's going to be one, two, three, and I invite you to prove why that is the only one. Right? So the number of uh, partitions that are possible is going to be equal to one. Therefore, L33 is going to be equal to one. All right, so let's see if we can prove uh, just a couple basic properties of these law numbers, right? So again, L and K is what we refer to as a law number, right? So theorem one. Theorem one. So the law of N, N is equal to one for all natural numbers N. So what exactly are we asking here, right? So proof. So that means we desire to partition uh, S is equal to 1, 2, all the way up to N into N, into N distinct non-empty subsets. Right, um, and of course these uh, subsets need to be disjoint, right? So clearly, um, P containing one, uh, two, all the way down to n uh, satisfies this. Right, this is always going to work. So that means we have at least one of these values. So that means L and N is going to be greater than or equal to one, right? Because we already have found that this is going to be true for all natural numbers M for sure. All right, so now we need to show that there is not a number bigger than one um, so that we can use sort of like a squeeze theorem argument here. So suppose there is another partition uh, so if there is another partition, that means uh, one of those is not a singleton set, right? So with the loss of generality, um, we can consider the partition uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, down to n. So how many sets do we have here? Sets m minus 1, uh, which doesn't satisfy. Right? And if you want like a more uh, firm uh, foundational proof for this, 
Um, you may know the pigeonhole principle, where if you have uh, n objects and n plus 1, um, or if you have n holes and more than n objects, um, and then you put all those objects into a hole, then at least one of those holes is going to have more than one object in it, right? So it's pretty much uh, using like an informal way of going about this, right? So this is impossible, and I'm choosing that um, to be my basis point. You could do the same for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to n, right? So using this principle, you can find out that l and n is going to be less than 1, uh, forcing l and n to be equal to 1. All right, so let's go through another example, and let's try and calculate some things. So let's consider the set of uh, law numbers of the form L4K. So what am I looking at here? So now I'm considering the set containing four elements, one, two, three, and four, and I'm going to be breaking the set up into partitions of size K. So one, two, three, four, and that's it, right? You cannot break it up into five um, non-empty subsets in that partition, right? And you can go through the process of um, that proof. All right, so let's consider the case where K is equal to one. So P is going to contain what? All right, so one set. Of course, this, the set S itself with that linear ordering, the natural ordering. So one, two, three, four. Uh, we also have one, two, four, three. We have one, three, four, two. One, three, two, four. Uh, and keep in mind, these are all different linear orderings. Same set, different orderings. One, three, four, two. And one, four, two, three. So, as you should already know, there's going to be three factorial different ways of writing this permutation where one is in the first position, right? So notice I'm here focusing on one. You can do the same for two, you can do the same for three, and you can also do the same for four, right? So that's going to be all of the partitions. That means the size of P is going to be equal to three factorial um, multiplied by four, which is the same as four times six, which is going to be 24. Right, some some fundamental counting principle there, right? So that means what? So that means L41 is going to be equal to 24. All right, so similarly, for K is equal to 2, uh, 1 can find, and I'm just going to leave this to you um, just for fun, um, to show that L42 is going to be equal to 36 by, you know, listing out all the possible uh, combinations. All right, so let's go through the k is equal to 3 case, right? So that means we're going to have three sets in our partition. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 is one. Uh, you can have 1, 2, 4, 3 to be another. You can have, uh, what else? You can have 1, 3, 4, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4. You can also have 1, Four, two, three, and one, four, three, two. Right. Now keep in mind that this set here is also the same as the partition three, two, four, one. Those are the same exact thing. It's the same exact sets, and the linear ordering defined on them is the same. Right. Because singletons are unique, and two four is the same as two four. Now clearly we are missing some of these. Uh, for example, I can look at the ordered uh, pairs, uh, 2, 1, 1, 2, uh, 3, 1, 1, 3, 4, 1, and 1, 4, right? So that's going to be all of them uh, once we list them all out. So the size of P is equal to 12. That means the law number uh, 3, comma, where we at? Uh, 4, comma 3 is going to be equal to 12. And as usual... L44, what's this going to be equal to? So the only partition that's going to be possible is going to be the partition 1, 2, 3, and 4, the singleton sets. So in that case, then this is going to be equal to 1. All right, so just a recap of what we've talked about at least here. So L41 was equal to 24. L42 was equal to 36. So it appears to be increasing, but as we see, it doesn't necessarily uh, increase always. Uh, it definitely has a 
not really symmetry pattern, but it sort of has an increase and then decreasing pattern, uh, sort of like the Pascal triangle uh, binomial coefficients sort of have. So you can also consider, say, the La triangle um, and analogous to the Pascal triangle, uh, just to see what that is, right? So we've just introduced the law numbers and a couple properties. So the first theorem that we discussed was um, law of nn was equal to 1 uh, for all natural numbers n. And another property um, that I'll leave for you as an exercise is that law n1 is always equal to n factorial. In the next video, we're going to go through some extra properties of the law numbers, um, in particular how they relate to derivatives of a particular exponential function. Hope you enjoyed. As always, if you enjoyed, please like this video, consider leaving a comment, and if you enjoy the channel content, please subscribe. We publish several new topics every single week. Thank you.